In this video, I'm going to be discussing basting. Basting is normally a temporary stitch, so there's no backstitch involved because it will eventually be taken out of your final project. Basting has a variety of uses. It can be used to tack pieces together so it's easier to stitch them in the final stage. It can be used to keep items closed, such as the top of your collar. It can be used to ease items such as the top of a sleeve, you would normally do a basting in order to ease it into a hole, or it can also be used to create a ruffle. If you pull the basting threads, the fabric will then ruffle up. It has a variety of uses and is usually found in almost every project, so you need to learn how to base. So let's get started. So I want to show you the difference between doing a regular stitch and then doing a basting stitch. The first one is going to be the regular stitch that I'm going to show you. And I'm just going to have my machine on the normal settings with a medium length stitch, which on my machine is a 2.5. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch a little bit with this stitch length. Okay. And now I'm going to do a basting stitch. And with a basting stitch, you're going to want to put your stitch length up to the highest number that your machine can do. Mine is a 6. So I'm going to change this to a 6. And now I'm going to do it right next to it. And with a basting stitch, you normally never do a back stitch. And it goes a little faster because you're doing longer stitches. Okay. So here are my two stitch lengths side by side. The one on the right here is a regular length stitch. The one right next to it is a basting stitch. So as you can see, this base stitch, you'd probably get three of these regular stitches in that length. So that's the difference in what it looks like. Here's a closer look of those stitches again. This top one is the basting, the bottom one is the regular stitch. If I stick my seam ripper through the bottom one, you can see that it's really tight. It's really small. Now if I go through the top basting one, there's lots of room. So now you can see the difference between a really tiny stitch and a really big stitch. So now I'm going to show you some examples of when you would be doing a basting stitch. So now I'm going to show you how to create the ruffle look. What you're going to do is make sure that your machine is on the largest stitch, which is the basting stitch. And you're going to, usually you'll do your first line at your 5 8 seam allowance. You're just going to go whatever your main distance is that you're doing. Usually it's down the whole length of the thing, but since this is just an example, I'm not going to go down the length. And then I'm going to go 1 quarter inch from that last stitch and go ahead and stitch another line. Okay, once those two are done, what we're going to do is then pull these threads and you'll see that it'll start ruffling up. So now that I have my two basting stitches, all I need to do now to create a ruffle is just pull these threads and you see it starts to gather up. And the reason why you do two is because it's just a little bit stronger. And if you just do one, there's a chance that you might break it. So it's just a little bit more secure. And there you go. If you did this all on this line, you would have a ruffle around this whole piece. So now I'm going to show you how to ease a fabric piece, such as the top of a sleeve. We're going to pretend like this is the top of my sleeve. And it basically starts out the same as a ruffle. You're going to do two lines of basting stitch, one about one quarter away from each other. And again, you're going to hold your threads and pull your fabric. Not a lot though, not as much as a ruffle usually. And then you're going to take this ruffle that you just created and evenly distribute it throughout the top of say your sleeve. And you're not really doing it to create a ruffle look. What you're doing is trying to make your piece a little bit smaller in order for it to spit, uh, fit in the area that it needs to go. So it's kind of like a soft, a softer ruffle look. And then this piece has gotten a little bit smaller, but it's not really ruffly. So that's how you, that's how you would ease a piece. So now we're going to apply basting to an actual project. 
This is a collar that I've made for a shirt and it's been already sewn all along these three edges here and I just flipped it inside out. So what the directions now say is base raw edges together. Since the top is the only raw edges I have left in my collar, what they want me to do is, you see I have my top portion and I have my bottom portion here. So I'm gonna base right along the top here without doing any back stitching and my 5 8 seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and get my machine and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and start basting this. Um, again, you're not going to do a back stitch and I'm just doing this at the 5 8 seam allowance. If your directions do not indicate any other change, then you always assume it's at the 5 8 so I'm doing this in a different color than my fabric and that's because basting is normally a temporary stitch. So I'll probably take this out eventually and if I do it in a different color, that means it's gonna be easier for me to see. The reason why we're doing a basting stitch for this part of the project is because it's probably meant to keep the collar nice and flat and even when you're pinning it then to the rest of your shirt. So that's why a lot of times when you're doing a collar, it'll say to base the top after you've turned it inside out. So now I'm gonna do this side as well. And again, no back stitching. And basting is also nice because it, since you're doing a larger stitch, it goes by a lot faster when you're stitching something. Okay, and that's how you do a basting stitch in that instance. A lot of time when directions in your pattern say they want you to base, it's normally to attach two pieces together. So I have here my collar, which I'm going to base to my shirt. The reason why you do that is you're just tacking these pieces together so when you're doing a final stitch for it, it's already held together very nice and neat. So it just makes it a little bit easier for when you're trying to sew the little bit more complicating pieces together. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish pinning this because obviously pinning is the first step before doing anything. And then I'm gonna break up the machine and I'm gonna go ahead and baste my collar around the neck edge of my shirt. So now I have my collar pinned to my shirt and I'm gonna go ahead and just baste along my five inch seam allowance. And you always want to keep your basting threads pretty long. Because if you make them too short because you don't do a back stitch, they can start to come out. So you don't want them to come out before you're ready. So that's why I leave my, my end threads pretty long. And so all I'm doing is just tacking these two pieces together to get ready to uh, do my final stitching on it. So those are usually the main reasons why you do a basting stitch, but you'll probably be asked to do it for any kinds of reasons, either tacking or helping to keep things closed or feeding a ruffle or something like that. So those are, those are a few of the big ones, but that's basically uh, how you do a basting stitch.